Would I do it again? Well, today's episode, we're going to talk about that. And I got to start this by telling you that last week, my wife, Kate, and I were scrolling on Facebook together and lo and behold, memories pop up. And when the memories popped up, they reminded us that we had taken possession of our home on December 3rd of 2018. And it was a eye opener realizing that three years of our life had passed basically just like that. And um, while I will say that it wasn't a normal three years because of the global pandemic um, and a, a lot of change in our personal lives, you know, we, we had we have another child who's, you know, become a full grown kid as opposed to just being a baby who she was when we came down. Um, you know, our children have grown feet while we've been here, and we've had a lot of changes, both in our personal and professional lives. And the question that we asked ourselves, which is probably the question that you're asking yourself, and the reason that you're here is, is do we regret moving to Tampa, Florida? And today we're going to answer that question. <music> Hey there and welcome. If this is your first time to the channel, I want to let you know that we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, work here, play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. We are going to cover all of that. And if you're considering making a move or relocating to the Tampa Bay area, just like me and my family did three years ago, uh, we'd be more than happy to help you with that. I'm a licensed real estate agent, a team leader at the True Living Group here at EXP Realty. Um, we get calls from people just like you from all over the country who are considering relocating, buying, or investing in the Tampa Bay real estate market. However, you got to get a hold of me, whether it's text message, email, calling. You can even schedule a, a time to meet on Zoom directly in my calendar link below. Whatever it is, I got your back. So what I wanted to do today is really share with you guys, you know, our experiences over the last three years and really kind of help you answer some of those questions. Because I'm assuming if you're watching this is because you're either considering making the jump or you just recently made the jump to the area. And um, one of the things that, that I wanted to share with you is just how much our life has changed and how much that influences the decision of to stay or to leave. Now, in full transparency, you know, we moved from Metro Detroit where it was cold and gray for five months out of the year. And when I say cold and gray, I mean, it's downright miserable. Now, there is a, a summer that is incredible. There's a, a fall, which in my mind, I believed was incredible. But in all reality, <laughs> there's a few days that are absolutely amazing. And the rest is pretty much just cold and rainy. Um, but I will say this, you know, there's a six week stint back home in Michigan where it was incredible. And um what I know about me and my wife personally, the reason that we made this move, you know, in general was because we really want to be places where the sun is shining. And if you live in an area where you don't get a lot of sunshine, then this is going to be a tremendous relief to you. Because what I will say is it dramatically affects your mood and you may not recognize it, but we surely did, especially after being here for a specific time period or a certain period of time. It was probably six months that we were here before we started to notice that when it would stay gloomy, quote unquote, uh, and I say that, I use that term loosely because gloomy here is a two to three day stint. And those happen probably a few times a year. And you really start to notice that the sun is not shining. And I came from a place where you would literally go weeks before the sun really broke out and had a day. And then it would be covered up again for weeks at a time. And um, I'm not being facetious about that. That's real life. And when we came down here, obviously it felt great. But when we first made the move, y'all, it felt like we were on island time. And if you've never heard that term before, it's basically, you know, your vacation party mode, whatever it is in your mind, that's what we were living on. And when we first came down, 
my wife and I don't have traditional jobs. You know, I'm a real estate agent and a real estate coach, and my wife works within our business as well. So we do have the flexibility and to, to work from home. So, you know, we, for us to come down, we were spending a lot of times at home and at the beach because that's what you do when you move to Florida, right? Now, I say that in, in, in if you have to go to a job, please know that I truly respect that. And what I don't, I'm not trying to make this sound like that's the only way to do it. But for us, we experienced this kind of thing where we were like six months in, it just felt like we were still in this vacation cycle and not meaning that we weren't working, but it, the way the lifestyle felt, and I'm, I know I'm having a hard time articulating this, but like, it was just strange because it, we didn't have that mode of going to an office anymore and then coming back home and you kind of get this switch you know we just lived in and worked all in the same place and that was kind of strange and it did kind of leave this weird vibe of like what do you <laughs> where's the cutoff where's the in between and we had a lot of visitors during that initial time period as well and the one thing that i will say about that is while it's a huge blessing to have people come and and in you know really lay their hands on your place and say, this is awesome. Congratulations, guys. And we want to have that. We want to, we obviously want people to experience why we chose to move down here. The other thing that comes with that is people come with a vacation mindset also. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're not able to get the amount of work done that you need to because someone else is in vacation mode and you're trying to be a gracious host, right? Like, and I'm not, again, I'm not negative about it. This is just a balancing act that you're probably going to have to prepare yourself for if you move to Florida and you do have friends and family that come visit you. Remember, they're on vacation mode and we're in life mode <laughs> and it can be a little bit of a challenge for you. Um, to balance that. So definitely keep that in mind. The other thing that I, I wanted to share with you guys is while the weather has been such a pro, eight months of sunshine, at least y'all, at least, okay, there's 285 or 300 days of sunshine in, in the Tampa area. You know, St. Petersburg is called Sunshine City, for goodness sake. Florida is the Sunshine State. We moved here for this. The, the thing that I will say conversely that came on the other side of it is like, it gets so hot during the summer. And when I share this with my friends and family, they, they always ask, you know, what's the biggest difference between where you were and where you are now? The first thing I always tell people is you don't have to shovel sunshine. You just don't, right? Which is awesome. However, you do have to protect yourself from the sunshine and it gets hot and it gets humid. And during the summer, you know, our pool deck literally has mold and mildew that grows on it. I never had that problem back up north. Um, you know, so we need a power washer. We've got to have that done a lot more often. Um, and it's just damp all the time. And when you go outside at five o'clock in the morning to go to the gym, if you're an early bird like I am, and it's still 83 degrees and the relative humidity is 91%, <laughs> it, you're like, what is happening? And how the weather works is it's like almost like God reaches over in May and just kind of flips the switch on the on the oven button and throws a wet towel in there with it. Yeah, it you know what it feels like? It feels like when you open your dryer and it's only been running for 10 minutes. Yeah, that's basically what the air feels like every day from uh, basically July through September, the end of September. It's hot and steamy, y'all. So those three months are brutal. Uh, you know, October is still a little bit warm. It starts to cool down towards the end. And then um, May, it starts to warm up, like I said. And then usually about the second week of November, the Lord reaches back over, pushes the switch down. All of a sudden, humidity breaks. It's 73 degrees. It's the most awesome sauce ever. And that is really what happens there. So, and I share this with you guys, because when we're talking about, you know, would we do this again? You, these things you have to take into account, because if you can't handle that kind of lifestyle where it's going to bear down on you, and it is, y'all, I am always honest on this channel. I hope that you can feel that. Um, it's going to bear down on you, and you're not going to want to do anything during the day most people go for their walks early in the morning or late at night. Um, very little yard work or anything gets done outside just because it's so hot. And that's the reality of it. But for us, it was the trade, right? And 
am I willing to trade three months of my nostrils sticking together? My, if my automobile breaks down, I can freeze to death on the side of the road, you know, getting the car accidents, not us personally, but like you see them every single day from cars sliding off the road. I mean, it was just nonsense. And for us, we were more than willing to give that up. Right. So think you and think, how does this apply to me? Because the eight and a half, nine months of just unbelievable weather that we get here was so worth the trade. All right. Now, when it comes to friends and family, this is one of the things that I think, you know, people can really struggle with. And I know we have personally too. And, you know, my wife is someone who really values relationships and being in relationship and family. And we packed up our family and moved 1200 miles away from everyone we knew and loved. We knew one person in all of Pinellas County, we moved to the Tampa area. And um, that was not a a really good friend. It was somebody I knew it was somebody I could talk to. And we came down and we actually had lunch with them like the very first weekend, which was awesome. But we don't have a support structure. So definitely keep that in mind. If you need that support, if you've ever tested the waters and, and know that it doesn't work for you, I would strongly encourage you not to relocate anywhere not just Tampa, don't relocate. If you need and have to have that support um, or if you have to, to be involved really in, in, a in with your family relationally, maybe they have health challenges or whatever it is that you can't take that risk or you can't pop on a plane and fly home at any time, I would strongly encourage you to reevaluate the relocation situation unless you absolutely have to because of employment. So that's my recommendation there because what ultimately ends up happening is people get homesick and, you know, they come down and they, they, they get entranced and, um, and lured in, you know, by the mermaids in the Gulf and, and the, the weather. And it is beautiful when you walk on the beach, y'all, and you just hear the birds and the water, you know, gently rushing up against and you see the sunsets, man, it just locks you in. It locks you in. But when you got to go back home, you got to go back to work, you got to go back to experiencing life. And if if you have if you're somebody who, who needs to be really close to family and friends, I would strongly encourage you again to to reconsider or definitely have the mindset of like, can we do part time? Because that's probably a better situation for you because you just don't want to be stuck in that spot. So take that into consideration, you know, and then there's this other kind of thing that happens here in Florida, too, that I've witnessed as well. And, uh, you know, there's a term for people who come from, you know, the northern states into Florida in the winter. They call them snowbirds, right, because they migrate from the north to the south, um, which is awesome. And that's what me and my wife thought we were going to do. But God had different plans for us. And, um, you know, we got down here is great, but there's also another term that gets used for people who, who move from up north to Florida and then halfway back up and they call them halfbacks. And you'll find a lot of these people that live in the Carolinas right, or Kentucky and Tennessee. They came down and discovered that either that they could not deal with the, 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 the warm temperatures in the summer. That's the one that usually gets people. You know, we're talking about 90 degree averages, you know, July, sep, um, July August, September. That's pretty warm. And that's on average, y'all. So that means we're probably hitting 93, 94 in the three summers that we've experienced here, I've never seen a temperature over 96. Um, and I know that's hot, trust me, believe me. Um, but we also live really close to the Gulf and we do get a breeze, so we do get a break. It's not like we live inland. I couldn't imagine living in Orlando and having 97 degree temperatures. It's a swamp um, and that it would be stifling, right? So it's already hot enough. Um, you know, for perspective, but these people come, they move here, and then they get sick of it for whatever reason, right? Maybe it was politics, maybe it was, um, you know, not having friends and family, they wanted to be closer, but they didn't want to be too close, you know, one of those like, ah, you're cool, but you need to be over there type of things. Um, you know, it, maybe they live in the Midwest, and now they're in the Carolinas, so it's a day trip back home. And I can see that, right? And um, I, I will say this, you know, it does get weird. You know, if you're used to having a, a seasonal change, it is strange when everything is basically just green all the time. And we, we do have a seasonal change. You know, it's the winter right now. Um, and my leaves on my oak tree are falling off, but they're still green. <laughs> Right. It's, it's very it never goes bare. It's very interesting situation. Um, and, you know, things don't grow as fast. Our long guy starts coming every every two to three weeks as opposed to twice a week. And there's all these big changes that you experience. But 
you know, these are the things, and I kind of give you some pros and cons because I want to share with you guys the things that you really have to watch out for. You know, the other thing that I will say is our grocery bill did go up probably 20 to 30% when we moved down originally, but we don't pay any state income taxes. So that's a huge win on the back end. Our insurance from where we were is much lower. I hear people who lived here for a long time complain about their taxes. And again, my perspective is different. I came from a Midwest town. We Detroit is not known for, for being the, the luxury capital of the planet. Let's be honest, right? There are luxury environments in Detroit. We love them. They're beautiful, right? But our tax base was fair. I figured it was it was very fair for what it is. Do I think it was on the higher side? Yes, but that's just the reality of you know being in a situation where you know our government gives out everything. And that's I'm not trying to be political here, just dealing in money, right? talking about monetary policy. So, you know, when we got here to looking at our, our tax tax percentage, basically, you know, we're paying just a little over a percent of what the home value is. I think that that's more than 1% of what the home value is. I think that's more than fair. And obviously taxes will be a little bit different depending on what city you live in. So, you know, keep that in mind, but you can see that on any website, y'all. Just go to the government website, go to the tax assessor of the city you're looking uh, to relocate to. It'll tell you exactly what the millage rates are. You can see the state value of the home, multiply that time the millage rate, and that's gonna give you your tax base. It's not a complicated formula. Um, but it's definitely something worth looking into, you know, and, and, it, and I share that story with you about the halfbacks because it is something we've considered, you know, in the summer when it's ridiculously hot, we've had the fortune of, well, that's when we'll usually travel back north to see family um, at that point or take vacations. And you see a lot of that here as well. Um, and, and the other thing here that, that I would say, like, you have to get used to is the fact if you're going to live in a coastal region, you have to get used to the mindset that um, it doesn't only belong to you. And I think people really struggle with that. Um, you know, you hear, I will hear locals say, you know, the, the tourist, you know, and, and that's fair. Um, but there's, there's also some negativity that I don't think is, is fair, right? You have these beautiful areas and, and they belong to everyone ultimately, right? We're all citizens of the United States. And there is this kind of like tribal mindset of like, that's our beach. It belongs to us, which is, is great in one way because people take responsibility and ownership for things. Our beaches are clean because of it. I love that y'all. I love that. But at the same time, you know, if we're not welcoming, then what are we really doing? And I'm not saying the community is not welcoming. I will just say that there is always a seedy underbelly, and I'm sure it is everywhere you're at too, of people who are just downright negative about everything, right? Don't come here if you're not from here. You hear that, you know, it's just nonsense. Um, you know, and what I'll say is don't let those people that you hear from a distance, the keyboard cowboys influence your perspective about what you believe Florida is or what it has to offer. What I would say to you is come and experience it personally um, and then take that evaluation and apply it to what your goal is because you can find any nonsense anywhere you want, right? You can find all the negatives if you go digging for it. But what I'll say is this, after three years, um, and I wasn't trying to delay this, but uh, after three years, we wouldn't give it up for the world. We love it here. Our children love it here. And they struggled, man. I remember pulling out of the driveway of the grandparents' house when we left and our kids were bawling, right? My wife was crying. It was a very sad moment for everybody. And that's not going to be easy for you or anyone else that you know, love or trust who's going to relocate, right? Get used to that. But, you know, here we are three years later and my kids absolutely love where they live. And I, you know, when you ask them, hey, and I don't try to fill their head with that stuff. Hey, tell me why. Why do you want, why do you love it here? Well, we, you know, they've got friends now. So that, you know, if that's a concern of yours or you're afraid of it, know that you're going to overcome that. Um, but the other thing is they just love the lifestyle, right? To be able to go for a bike ride in the middle of the winter and not have to, you know, put mittens on and worry about sliding off the side of the road. And I know that's not everybody's experience, but it's ours. And I'm just trying to share these things with you, y'all, because, you know, at the end of the day, relocating or moving to a different area is always nerve wracking. And what I will say is this, we've been welcomed to the, the Tampa Bay community, the area, you know, with open arms, we've found wonderful friends. We, we've gained beautiful relationships. We've, you know, experienced so much. Every day I set out to experience this city, I take you along with me and I'm still 
uncovering so many things. And every time I go out, it's like a, it, it's like opening the Pandora's box. You're like, oh my word, there's this, this, and this to do as well. And this, this, and this. And I just feel like, you know, I'm so blessed to bring you along with me on this journey. And I hope that uh, this, this video helps you in some way, shape or form, kind of wrap your mind around some of those challenges you could face, but understanding that the benefits, you know, for us and our family handily outweigh them, right? We make it home every time we can. We, we, have the the family and every time they want to come that's an open invitation we just leave it wide open we'll make that work no matter what we love that right um and and are there days when you're tired of the <laughs> the, the gnarly weather in the summer the answer is 100 percent um but you know what as we're in a country where you have an automobile you can pack up and take off for the weekend you can get some relief in that respect and it it's just worth it, y'all. I would, I, I'll sweat, take two showers a day, jump in the pool five times a day, change three times a day for me personally, but that's us, right? That's not you. And I wanted to make this video so I could just give you some perspective and say, you know, would I do it again after three years? Would I, am I disappointed in the decision that I made for my family? The answer is 100%, not even close, right? Even with the bugs, you know, which we didn't even talk about today. You can check that out in um, in the videos below uh, of, about the pros and cons of living in Tampa. And, and even with the bugs, even with the heat, even with the traffic, you know, I, I will sacrifice that all day, all day, because right now I'm sitting here, you know, it is, we're closing in on the end of the year. It's 74 degrees outside. The sun is shining and we feel absolutely blessed because of it. And we just love it, y'all. And hey, Thank you so much for sticking around. It is my pleasure to shoot videos like this. And what I'd like to say is this, um, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment below. If you have any questions about the area, something I didn't answer today, because I know it can go into everything, um, please put that in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer that question for you. And if you're considering making the jump, relocating, um, investing, or you really want to have a meaningful conversation about what that would look like, please feel free to contact me directly. You can call, text, email. I even have a link to my to my calendar where you can schedule a time to meet via Zoom. I'd love to, to, to have that discussion with you about that relocation or that investment property here in the Tampa Bay area. Again, my name is Juan Alcala. Thank you for spending the time with me. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life.